Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is uh, Steel Flyers and Joe Borg, and we're here for, I think this is our fifth edition, right, Steel, of the JV? You got it. As we're going to provide you with the latest and the greatest from the NFL, NHL, NBA, and also some World Junior Classic talk, and some talk on the Mets picking their top man, well, not top man, but second to top man, as their manager, as we get to that at the end of this show. But first and foremost, uh, let's get into Steel the NFL games of the week that have impressed yeah. us um, th- thus far this week, where uh, right now uh, I would say a team that we kind of trampled on a little bit. You, you've you still been high on them, but I've kind of rightfully so with how they played in the last couple of weeks. Now they moved to eight and six, taking care of the Panthers, is the Buffalo Bills that won 31 to f- um, 14. Uh, Cam was all right in this game, 156, one and one, uh, 71 yeah. rushing though with a touchdown. Yep. Uh, but Josh Allen was back to being Josh Allen, three touchdown, only one INT. Still got pressured a little bit too much to my liking, but Singletary was fantastic out yeah. of the back. Yeah. Uh, so this was kind of the Bills team you need to see if they want to beat that Patriots team in the division, right? Exactly, exactly. And first of all, hey, man, how you doing? Um, we're, we're, I see you got a little holiday cup going on there and, uh, and Mm -hmm. we're, yep, there you go. Cool. And we're, uh, approaching the festive season. Yeah, there you go. There's the gritty. (laughs) We're approaching the holiday season. And so we would like to thank everybody for hopping on and checking out the fifth volume of the JB and steel show. And I'll tell you what, there was some very interesting games that happened this past weekend. And there's some very interesting games that are, Still on the docket that haven't been played yet, but anyway. And then as we speak, the um, going into the third quarter, the Raiders is ten to zip um, over the uh, Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns, yeah. Cleveland Browns having uh, Baker Mayfield is not playing in that game. I believe they're on their third. Uh, oh, Case isn't playing. No, I believe they're on their third string. They signed uh, uh, Lodetta. Oh, Nick, the- Mullins. Nick Mullins. Oh, that, that's okay. Yeah, there you go. So that's who their quarterback yeah, that's is. Dude that played in, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he the dude that played in San Francisco a couple? Go- yeah, yeah, played yeah. a couple games in San Francisco. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not that okay. well though. He's yeah, he's definitely more of a third string quarterback. Right, right, right. Um, I think we had some some major surprises this weekend too, where we saw, you know, the likes of the Arizona Cardinals fall to uh, the only team to ever lose a game who has a 10 win season loses to a team that has one win or less <clears throat> first time ever. And the Cardinals managed that. to do that, that. That makes it even worse because my biggest thing that I was going to say in this game is you just got spanked. Like you didn't just lose. You oh, got no. smoked by the defense. Yeah, and you got golf, smoked. Golf looked like the, the guy – that he was picked first to overall to be in that yeah, game. Yeah, he did. Touchdown uh, was pretty much perfect. Uh, but but the big the big story of this game only for one week because he hasn't been this all season. We'll see what he does here right. on out. But was Craig Reynolds in the backfield just coming literally Holy out of nowhere, moly. having 112 yards on 26 <sighs> rushes. He was the guy who was just a dog in that game, and they just kept feeding him the rock, and rightfully so. Uh, So he was the difference in that game, along with Goff playing more like you would want Jared Goff to play going forward for this Lions team. Because obviously, right, everything's about the future for this Lions team, not about the present. So Exactly, exactly. So that, to me, that was a big shocker as well. Was not really, I mean, was not really expecting to see the worst team in every single statistical category going up against one of the best teams in every statistical category. And (laughs) the Cardinals walk away uh, kind of with their tail between their legs on that one. And so I believe that's their uh, boo-boo game for the year because yeah. they had a couple games there where uh, Murray was not in and they lost. The, I believe they they were uh, uh, two and one uh, the three games that he was out, right? Uh, yeah, and then he was bad against the Rams when right. they lost to the Rams. Kyler was right. not good in that game. Right. Okay. So, I mean, they, they've had some kind of some stinker games, plus the fact that Murray wasn't in there for three games as well, too, now. So, uh, but 
seriously, though, they're still aside from the Packers, which, man, that game there was, oh, my gosh. But aside from the Packers, the Cardinals, I think, are one of the best teams in the league right now. They're still in a good spot, but if I was doing like how hockey guy does his power rankings for hockey, where if you get a putrid loss, you move. Usually, you're going to move down. I would definitely usually, be, yeah, I would definitely be moving them down a couple pegs after losing to the Detroit. Lions. Oh, for sure. Oh, and, yeah, because now there's like a three way tie now for the ten and four teams. Exactly, exactly. Where also Baltimore competing at that high of a level um, with Hutley, and it also. Uh, yeah. just shows me how good that team is, um, where I, I think they would be ranked a little bit higher for me after being that close. Because even though that's a loss, when you don't have Lamar and, and you're playing a Packers team like the Packers are this year, Aaron Rodgers balled out even with the foot injury or the toe injury, excuse me. But um, I think that just shows, one, that one, that kid Huntley is a solid backup quarterback that could, you don't have to – overcomplicate things for him and rely on him too much and he could just do his thing he could do his thing and then you had him run for 73 as well and then you had latavius murray do his thing a little bit you know so uh, i think um he he proved to be a solid backup but also aaron Rodgers proved that even with an injury he's still aaron Rodgers and can figure out a way to obviously get over the hump in the end you know um it also says a lot, too, about the defenses on both sides of the ball here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And going into the playoffs, I think both of these defenses are for sure going to need to tighten up. Because when you allow 30 and 31 points like that and you allow a backup quarterback to, to play that bloody well. Uh, you know, look, and here's the other thing, too. Huntley was a backup like quarter. That game pretty much because he had yeah touchdowns thrown. Uh, he had two touchdowns on the ground, so right. that's like basically uh, just a little bit less yardage on the ground than you would normally see Lamar have at seventy three. Basically, play like a miniature Lamar Jackson. That's game. what I mean. You know what I mean. And so it's like, all right, so the guy getting it done, okay. Uh, but to me, that was one of the other shockers as well. I thought that you know. I wasn't really sure about that game. It, I felt it was it was one of those games where I think Green Bay should have won that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think with obviously the backup quarterback for Baltimore, if it was Lamar, I would say that's more of a fuck the coin game for me. But with the backup quarterback in, I would definitely say that's a game I would have favored Green Bay. They figured out how to pull it out in the end. But that also shows me just how good of a team the Baltimore Ravens are to be able yeah. to stay that close uh, without yeah. their best quarterback in the game. So, yeah, I have to agree with you on that. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, also, hey, man. A terrible about... game is that Saints game. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I was just going to say, how, how about the uh, Dolphins now? What are they, seven games now in a row they've rattled off? Uh, I believe you, six, six, six. Six games, games now they've rattled off That's to go to seven and seven? Or to get to seven and seven, yeah. So, unless if that's okay. incorrect. Um, okay, that, that's what it's, that makes yeah. sense. No, right. it, says, it says so. Dolphins rally past Jets to extend winning streak to six games. This article I just saw. So, yeah, that's right. that's what it was. Now, yeah. I also think at this game, this wasn't even a game to me that Zach Wilson. I almost called him Josh Wilson, but Zach Wilson played very bad because he got sacked six times and was yeah. thirteen for twenty three. This was like one of those games your quarterback didn't have much opportunity to exist to do much because he was just under pressure the entire Chase, game. Chase, I mean, he was running for his life all game long. Yeah. Where also yeah. the big thing for me with the Dolphins is even though he threw two picks, Tua, um, he's just figured it out in different aspects. He's also, you rely on the running game. Well, they have Gaskin, they have Duke Johnson, uh, who played, like, amazing yesterday, had over 100 yards. So, I mean, I think uh, – if you can just kind of manage the game like he's been doing in these last six weeks, you're going to be a plenty fine team with the Dolphins because they obviously have, I don't know what they are necessarily on paper statistically, but of late, um, not, it's not great to give up 24 to the Jets, but of late, um, I thought their defense has been much better in this six-game winning streak. Getting there. So if you can go, yeah. yeah, if you can keep building defensively, 
mm-hmm. and you can keep having to uh, just do what he can do. And obviously, you can run a little bit too. He didn't have to in this game because you had Ga- uh, Gaskin and Johnson doing. Yeah, exactly. But um, you, you, you uh, I think they're moving in the right direction, and this team is definitely taking the right steps in the right direction with Brian Flores down there and yeah. uh, Tua took a quarterback. Uh, yeah. I don't think you have to worry about that if he keeps playing at this level. Agreed. Agreed 100%. And, um, you know, props to, to the Dolphins, man, for cranking off six games. Well, we'll see how this goes. Um, I don't know how it's going to go further for them or if they're going to be able to because it's going to be really tight in the AFC. And with them being at 7-7 seven and seven right now, uh, you know, they're they're in the hunt. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I know the other game you were going to talk about, too. And, that and they was kept the, the Ravens at 10 points. Uh, yeah, they did. That's right. They I think did. It was 10 po- yeah, they kept the Ravens at 10 points. They um, also early in the season ended up – um, beating the Patriots, and I think it was the first game. Yeah, the first game, seventeen to sixteen, which was an impressive early win yep. uh, for mm-hmm. the Dolphins team. And then they went on the losing skid, of course, until yeah. they now went on this really impressive winning skid that started with the Houston Texans. Um, but <laughs> I think that um, I think that Ravens win is by far their most impressive win of the season. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. And I know the other game you were going to talk about too, and that's the. Uh, Boy, is that a big giant goose egg there for the Buccaneers? Was that Tom Brady I saw on the sideline throwing a tablet and getting all excited and upset and yelling and screaming? Was that what I saw? Him? Is that what I is that was was I mistaken on that? No, and this was one of the rare games Ronald Jones actually played well this season and uh, yeah. did well compared to Leonard Fournette. Um yeah, Leonard Fournette and, did not uh, have a good game. No, this was this was one of the rare games he did did, did poor this season. But that that was a terrible game. I mean, I have to. I didn't watch much of that game because it was a boring game. It was a game that nobody wanted to pay attention to because a nine a game, excuse me, that ends nine nothing. What like that? There's no interest in that game much at all, unless if you're a fan of either of those teams. And yeah. And so, but, and I know some people that are fans of both of those teams. Um, and so even they were saying that, you know, this, this game was pretty much of a stinker game anyway. I mean, it was only three field goals. What? <laughs> so it's not like there was a whole outpouring of offense here in this game. Um, you know, so just surprising though, that Buccaneers dropped down to 10 and four now. So. That's making that NFC race a little bit tighter now. Yeah. No, I agree. But as we wrap up our NFL talk, uh, I think we obviously have to talk about um, previewing the games. It's rare we get to put out the show in the morning or Tuesday. I know. (laughs) So we'll just give our predictions for the Bears. It's also rare, too. It's also rare, too, that we get to have two Monday games, even though we're kind of in the middle of one now already. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. 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 True. Um, which the one that we will predict uh, right now is the Chicago Bears versus the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. That is in Chicago. We'll just yeah. do a quick prediction of this. They're on a losing streak too. One and four. Um, in their last five, the Vikings are three and two in their last five. Um, I'm gonna go with the Minnesota Vikings as my predictor in that one. Yeah. Uh, slightly, even though yeah. It's in- I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Bears not playing very well. Vikings coming off that big win there against Pittsburgh. Um, So I really think that they're going to be able to. And this is another. Although, here's the thing, though, okay? This is a Monday night game here, but it's not in Minnesota. It's in Seoul. Yeah, it's in Chicago. It's in Chicago, right? So usually Minnesota doesn't win on Monday nights at home. Key phrase being at home. Yeah, which they're not. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, I think I'm going to lean. Oh, gosh, if any of my um, in-laws hear me say this, I will be disowned. But I'm going to have to lean Vikings on this one. <laughs> I mean, go Bears. But, yeah, the Vikings, I think, are, are definitely going to win this one. Yeah. We also didn't point out your quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, passed Philip Rivers to move into fifth in the all-time passing yards. Yeah, when 63,000 yards. Beat, yeah, when you beat the Tennessee Titans 19-13. to 13. 
But yeah. now we're getting back to previewing the games where the Washington football team plays the Philadelphia Eagles. It's tough to pick this game because teams they, there's multitudes of guys uh, going out for each team. Like, let me pull up the Eagles right now. And both teams are at six and seven. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, let's face it, for the guys still would know, though. Uh, well, yeah, but I'm talking about, like, not just the premise of the teams. Like, there's so many guys. Like, yes. the the football team had so many guys out, and then now we're getting extra guys out, like Dillard Dickerson, since we waited a couple extra days for the game. Um, and I, they, uh, Dickerson was a guy that really has filled in well on our offensive line, so now you have to go to the next person. Uh, so, like, that that gives a big hole in the offensive yeah. line. Once you that yeah. Next person. So that's kind of tough when the football team defense has been solid this year more inconsistent recently but still solid this year relatively uh so i think that's something we have to look for we also have to look for uh jalen hurt's ankle that has nothing to do with the COVID protocols but his ankle and if he's going to be active or not because this was reminiscent of the last game where you're kind of like trying to give it to the last second of like who's going to start and then you'll probably have it be a game time decision and see if it's him or Gardner. but obviously Oh, with the Washington football team, they might not have either of their guys, their top two options, because obviously Fitz is done with his IR with the hip. And then you have Kyle Allen is on the COVID uh, protocol. And then also Taylor Heineke is on the COVID protocol. So unless if they can check out by tomorrow, uh, you won't have either of them. Shermer, who went to my high school, was LaSalle High School's quarterback. Uh, active could be active for the uh, hey Washington. buddy <laughs> and, then, and then Garrett Gilbert um and then Garrett Gilbert <laughs> who has experience who got signed would probably oh, be the wow. end up being the starter but um yeah wow. like it's going to be interesting to see because there's so many guys on the COVID protocol um and then JD McKissick has a concussion uh, when it comes for Washington. Uh, Curtis Samuel supposed to be out the hamstring. Um, so, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's Senator yeah. Larson's uh, okay. out with protocol. Lucis. So just because at this current stage, Washington has like two times the people more than that out on protocol right now, I would have to lean us also. It's in the link. So with, yeah. with that being a factor, I would have to lean to the Eagles, even if Minshew's in because I saw uh, Minshew already – just yeah. manage a game well enough. Where also, I don't think they were going to overcomplicate the playbook. I think they're just going to keep doing what they were doing. But the Eagles have figured out that running the football with the guys we have on this team oh, has worked effectively to space out and open stuff. And then you can pass the football more effectively from running the football. I don't know why it took them the first six weeks to figure it out. But since they figured it out, it's been a heck of a lot better. So. Uh, I There's was, a few other I, teams, Joe, I think that could get that same message too. Oh, hey, yeah. if you run the ball, it'll open up the passing game. What do you know? Oh, no, no yeah. But uh, it's been a lot better, so I would lean uh, the Eagles in. You're going to lean game, Eagles on that? Because they have less guys out. Yeah. See, to me, this is At, tough to. Yeah, this is tough to because of with the amount of players both on on uh, the Washington team and also on the Eagles team Um, with it being a prime time with, even if Minshew starts, I still, yeah, I'm going to still have to lean Eagles because at least that is of all of the quarterbacks that potentially could start for both teams. He's the most experienced one other than, you know, Jalen, obviously. You know, he has more experience than Jalen, but you would obviously want Hurts in there, you know, but if he can't go because of his ankle, right? Yeah, well, Gilbert's not as experienced as Minshew, and then Shermer hasn't had any NFL starts. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So that makes Minshew the, the most experienced quarterback to put on the field, and if he's playing for my team, that's who I'm picking. No, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. So I would definitely roll with the Eagles with that. We can now move into the, the, this game is quick. For me, um, I don't think the Seahawks are going to beat the Rams in L.A. Um, I'm definitely uh, no. going, going with the Rams on yeah. this one. I, I think the Rams are going to be able to pull out the win on this one and be able to go to 10-4. and four. Well, it, I'll tell you what, though. Ever since 
uh, ever since Russell Wilson has been back, it's been a slow road for him. Um, it hasn't been all sunshine and berries <laughs> for him since he's come back from his thumb surgery. Okay. Uh, and I really feel that they basically got into a hole uh, that they were not able to climb out of because of him missing all that time during the season. And now they're just not able to catch up. And so I'm also with you on that. I'm going with Rams on this one uh, in in uh, uh, in L.A. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, we'll move into now, though, as we finished out our NFL news, we'll move into the NHL as it was announced today that the Montreal Canadiens joined the rest of the slew of teams that have been postponed after the holiday break, as well as the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, mm-hmm. for adding teams to the protocol. And then for everybody that does not know at this point, um, and if you live under Patrick Starr's rock, um, all the cross-border games are postponed um, in the NHL as well until after the holiday break. Yeah, uh, people that it's... love SpongeBob will get that reference. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I think for the cross-border, that was a very wise decision because it allows guys to be with their family for the holidays, where that was the biggest concern. And Elliot Friedman highlighted that on Center, and I agreed with him. You don't want to be stuck in the wrong country and not be able to be around the people you love at this time of the wow. year. So I think that for that premise, that makes sense. And I also think, like we talked about before the podcast, there's a 5% chance at most that they're going to the Olympics at this point when you then have the two weeks there to make up the scheduled game that you're pushing back now. And I think they designed that purposely where it was, it would be unfortunate if they couldn't go, but it's not like they can't just go to the next winter Olympics anyone who, and then just make up for not being able to go to this one there. So I'm with you on that for sure. And it's going to be a real shame. Um, This was something that the players were really pushing for, especially in this new CBA uh, that they wanted to be able to have the option to go to the Olympics Okay, and this was one of the things that helped to sell the CBA to the players was the ability to play in the Olympics. Do you know what I mean? And so it's very sad that it looks like they're not going to probably go uh, to the Olympics this year. I think players realize, though, at this point, it makes more sense not to because if you're in China, you're stuck for three to five weeks. Uh, like a, yeah, because like you have to follow quarantine like and all that. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's not good for his mental health. Uh, McDavid's hinted at that not being good, and he's obviously kind of the spokesperson of the, really uh, being the top echelon guy in the in the league. Uh, so um, I feel like it's just a trickle-down effect at this point where Pierre LeBron hinted at it on Twitter that it's not going to happen, but it's not a final decision. Also, spinning chicklets kind of hinted at it as well, written in biz. Um, where I'm sure Biz has even more insight now since he works for TNT, so he probably even knows more people to get information from. Um, right. But uh, I think it, it's definitely pushing in that direction where they're not gonna, gonna be going to the Olympics, which is unfortunate. But like I said, you're gonna you can make it up in the next Olympics. Uh, you can watch like we're getting to at the end of the show the juniors, but you can watch the world juniors and the young guys uh, representing their countries. Um, so I mean. At least there's that, and then you can see some guys that wouldn't normally get the opportunity AHL, or some guys that play overseas in the SHL and the Dell that are from America get to go represent their countries, that are from Canada get to go represent their countries. Uh, so yep. um, <clears throat> it, it, there's always a positive within a negative uh, as well. No, see, and that's that's why I like it, man. That's why I love your your insight about this kind of stuff, Joe, because you always do kind of find that positive, even though there's some type of negative that's going on here. And uh, I'm not sure, but I don't know if I've, if, if I know anything about the ladies, if they are going or not going, I'm not sure. I haven't heard or seen anything about that yet. And I do follow them on Twitter. I heard um, from watching something when, it came up on YouTube on a Sportsnet clip. <clears throat> they mentioned how they're still forming the rosters, so I would presume that they're still planning to go. You they mean to the Olympics or to the World Juniors? The, the Olympics, because they were saying how they are still doing, like, the, the coaches are – like, how they're doing, like, all the roster selection. Oh, yada, okay, yada, great. Yada, all that framework. So I think yeah. that's still track. 
but it would all depend on their ultimate decision at that point too. If people start expressing the game's top players start expressing their doubt, yeah. uh, th- then you have to see where, yeah, 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 yeah. where where it gets complicated. Yeah, yeah. but um, no, I just wanted to mention that because obviously you know they're they're going to be playing hockey as well too, or they're going to be interested in playing. I mean, you know, and I'll be watching their hockey games if they're going to be playing in the Olympics. You know, if the the men aren't going to be there, I'll be watching the women. But I'm assuming that if the men aren't going to be there, more than likely the women aren't going to be there either. I would have to presume, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. we'll have to wait and see. We'll yeah, we'll have to wait and see. see. Yeah. Also, yeah. I wonder if teams would just pull out at a certain point if the COVID rate got too high because Canada, there's a thing called the Spengler Cup, which is over in Switzerland which is okay. another foreign tournament where team Canada in that um, pulled out, which that would have showcased some talent that would have potentially became team Canada if they did not send the NHL or, but it made sense because they don't want to risk anything at this point. So they pulled yeah. out of that foreign tournament. Okay. Um, okay. So like, I would wonder if teams at a certain point would just say, we're just not going to set, like we're just going to not compete in this year. Yeah. Yeah. Olympics at that point because we don't want to send uh, anybody to get stuck, whether it's an AHL or an yeah. ECHL, uh, yeah. independent league, play, like whoever whoever it is, uh, we don't want anybody to get stuck. And I think I I think that's kind of I mean you have to listen to what the players are asking for. You can't force them to go. You know what I'm saying? And if they're expressing concerns, then you you I mean I'm sure that. Deep down, the owners are cheering, you know, because they're not sending their they're not sending their, uh, you know, talent and their assets away to go potentially get hurt or sick or get trapped over there for five or however many weeks, you know. So I imagine that the owners are probably secretly cheering, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree with that. But another thing. As we uh, flip um, more to the NHL uh, side of things and not the Olympics is, I think a big positive thing, the hockey guy, I watch a lot of his uh, YouTube content because he pulls puts out good stuff. Um, he pointed out is some guys that would have never got a chance this early, i.e. Jack Drury for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes that's kicking butt in his first couple of games. Um, and then also Austin Zarnick to revive his career who um, is got in a chance again with Bridgeport uh, and then played really well down there in the aisle system, played great and destroyed the Phantoms, the game that I was at uh, it, behind the net. Uh, and then he's been playing well for the Islanders as well in his couple of games. So it's nice to have that chance. Dakota Joshua, who's a, a former uh, ECHL, uh, he's kind of finding his group being a guy that can score at the lower line level and also add any, like, Spot like basically he'll fight anybody for his teammates type level to his game. Yeah, as well. yeah, man. Uh, Those so, are always um, good guys. So I think you're seeing guys because of this uh, get to be able to prove themselves sooner. And another flip side of that is, of course, if certain guys are doing as good as, like, say, a Drury, if there's a veteran that Carolina thinks they can trade out to get more assets that they need. Or just to let that kid play and then grab the oh, picks yeah. so they can add more yeah. younger assets into an already solid farm system they have with an already stacked team. Uh, sure. Then you you can um you can do that as well, and it just opens the world and doors of possibilities. So exactly, exactly. And so here's the thing, though. Now we're uh, there. We did mention this, I believe, briefly that they've um, halted all cross border games, and yeah, they have. Did. Yeah, and they have been uh, postponing a lot of games um, now um, as far as between now and the Christmas break. Um, There still are some games that are going to be played. Um, I believe there's a few games that are going to be played that are on for tonight. Uh, The Minnesota-Dallas game is going to be played tonight. And then uh, as far as we know, the Washington Capitals and the Flyers game and the Tampa Bay-Vegas game are still on for tomorrow. That's Tuesday the 21st. And then I believe that's it until you get to the 23rd. And then there's... uh, Yeah, because Wednesday is a list of all postponed games. 
And then there's five games allowed there. And those are pretty much all the teams that are either playing tonight or tomorrow. So it's Philly and Pittsburgh, Washington against the Islanders, Dallas against Chicago, and Tampa Bay against Arizona, and the Kings against Vegas. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> Where when it comes to this evening, uh, it, it's um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, the Minnesota Wild are seven two and one in their last ten. Where in, in comparison, the Dallas Stars are more mediocre at just a five, uh, a five on five. The Wild to me have been one of the more exciting teams all season. Oh, for sure. And I kind of just been rolling with them in general. Uh, so I feel like I'm just going to roll with them, even though they're on the road. The Stars haven't been as consistent of late. They've been trending in the wrong direction lately. Uh, so now they're back to only two games over 500. Excuse me. Exactly. So I feel like the Wild are going to be able to uh, figure this out and get their wins. Where the Wild are expected to have Spurgeon and Greenway out. Uh, where the Stars are expected to have Kivi Ronta and then, of course, Kat Tanner, uh, Kiro um, out who took the big hit. Um, so we hope he can be fine and everything uh, works out. Oh no, was that Kivy? Who? Which one of those two took the hit? One of those two took the massive hit from um Brett Conley. Yeah, I think it was Kiro. That was Kiro. Okay. Kiro, yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah, sure it was Kiro. They they did say they did say that he is um concussed, uh, but that everything he that was- is. Yeah, c- correct. It was Kira. Yeah. Right. He that he was concussed, uh, and that he is okay. He's still in the hospital. Okay, but he is he is okay and you know, moving extremities and you know, all that other stuff, but they did say he is concussed. Yeah. Yeah. Well that was a <laughs> that was a blind side. Yeah, that was definitely a blind oh, side. Oh my. I you know the that qualifies as a woo hit. And if you don't know what a woo hit is, <laughs> Ronnie Lott explained what a woo hit is. And Ronnie Lott uh, used to be the safety, Hall of Fame safety for the multiple Super Bowl winning 49ers, um, famously played without a, a chunk of his finger missing, uh, would hit you so hard that the audience. And the crowd would go, woo. And you could hear that. Can you imagine 65,000 people going, woo? Yeah. Well, just imagine 20,000 people going, woo. That's a woo hit. Yeah. All right. That's what that was. And it was legal, but oh, man, I'll tell you what. I don't think it was legal. I think it got a major for it. Um, I don't think so. I could be wrong. I don't think there was penalty. Was there interference? Yeah, he got interference. Oh, he did get interference. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, it's almost like. <laughs> and then the suspension will cause Conley also seventy thousand, which is nothing for a hockey player. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah. Okay, but whew, man, um, but yeah, Kira will be. Uh, they're, they're saying that he is concussed and will be okay. Um, as far as this game, the uh, Minnesota Wild against Dallas Stars, Minnesota been playing one of the hot. I mean, they're one of the hottest teams going right now. They only have uh, they only have eight regulation losses. Um, they've been able to get a a point in, in in a couple of games, but for the most part, nineteen eight and two uh, for twenty nine points to. Um, or for um sorry for 29 games played for 40 points to lead the central uh <laughs> and <laughs> what's really crazy is that i really liked minnesota going into this year and i really felt that they took a step last year by playing vegas very well in the first round of the playoffs and so um I think they've continued down that road. They've gotten much better play from uh, their other lines. Uh, Zuccarello has been playing better. You know what I mean? They, they've just been playing that the team's just been playing better. They've been getting good goaltending and, and things of that nature too. Plus, uh, you know, uh, the rookie of the year on the team signed a big contract uh, for the, and has been playing really, really well too. So um, I, I got to say Minnesota all day on this one. Yeah, no, yeah, I think this game is going to be Minnesota's been one of the better teams all season, and I think 
uh, that's just going to continue to stick. As for tomorrow, uh, the early game is us against the, the, the Flyers at home against the Washington Capitals. Capitals, Capitals yeah. are going to have Backstrom, Knetzel, Mantha, mm. Oshie, and Wilson, according to this out. Yeah. Uh, we have, well, Allison's out more in the minors, but it has a reported here. Yeah. Uh, is Frost this, still out? Yeah, this also has... Um, we have... Oh, hey, Hayes is on COVID protocol. Hayes is, we have we have three player or two players and three staff. Yeah, the so Flyers. The Flyers do protocol. Frost has been on COVID protocol. Wilman's on COVID protocol. Um, so hopefully day to day, hopefully Brass, since he's day to day, we'll be able to play in that game play. so he can slide in. And I did see that Hart practiced today as well too. Yeah, that was an undisclosed illness. That was like that wasn't even known if that was COVID or obviously it doesn't seem so because he probably right. wouldn't have been back as quickly. So right. that was something else. But yeah, um, if with the way that even though he looks like he's playing injured, he's had a couple assists of late and still obviously adds more of a presence on the ice defensively than anybody that would have to sub in for him if a uh, brass is also out. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tougher without the three deep at center when you have Cooch, G, and then Hayes. Uh, but if you can bring Brass in with the way he's been playing, that would definitely help a little bit. Yeah. Um, Cates has played well in his first a couple of games. I would feel bad for Jackson Cates because he keeps having to travel back and forth every five I seconds. know, I know. <laughs> uh, but but, <laughs> but um, he, he's actually, this is the best he's looked, I think, these last, these couple of games. He's, he's yeah. not that he looked bad last year in his cup of coffee, but like he looks like he's really matured from his time in the AHL this season to actually look more comfortable at the NHL level. Um, where yeah. uh, if you can put him in, uh, you can kind of slide people up, maybe put Patty on the third line, or you put Jackson on the third line. You'd have to pick which one you want to put on or 3C. Yeah. Um, at that point, I would honestly think the way Brown is just more of a 4C. And the way that Cage plays 3C level in the AHL at that point, I would just say leave the fourth line as it is because it's played well with Patrick Brown. I and, mean, yeah. And then just slide uh, Cage into the third line because it's not like you have to keep the lines you go into a game with once you're in the game. We see coaches change the lines all the time. So if it didn't work, the first two shifts, then you would just flip that line anyway to something else. So it's not like it's the end of the world. If you moved him up a line and he didn't play well, you would move him down. The other reason I think that could be the case is we've already seen yo move multiple people up. Well, here's the thing though. I frankly, I don't really think this is going to matter much because well, we can I th- play short forward if we have to. Yeah. Play. Yeah. And, and frankly, I think Washington's basically just going to step all over the, the flyers. I, I don't even, it doesn't matter how much Carter Hart stands on his head. It doesn't matter. As soon as there's a little bit of adversity, this team shrinks into a little corner and runs away. They, they don't know how to push back. I mean, they, they did for one or two games here and there, and that's great, but you're doing that against the bottom teams, Right. So these are the te- these are the games you should be minus winning. Vegas, other than Vegas, right? Minus Vegas, but these yeah. are the games you should be winning, not struggling to win, not taking guy that not being taken to overtime to try to get a point out of a game or something. I mean, come on, these are the bottom team. You should be winning these team, winning these games. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this is kind of where I'm at with the Flyers this year. They're gonna win some games. Yep. But they're probably going to win, or they're probably going to lose more of the games they're going to win. And quite frankly, I think it's just basically a train wreck until we get to the trade deadline to see what we can unload. And then it's going to be okay. What's going to happen here at the end of the season? Because you're going to either probably not have the coach, and you're probably either not going to have half or most of the players that are on the roster right now, or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean major we'll changes see, are going to happen. That obviously depends, like Boudreaux said with the Canucks. If you can get things going from here on out, that changes the like basically that changes the tide of your season. Um, okay, all right, all right, Projo, I get you, but let me ask you a question, buddy. Let me ask you a question, okay? Why is it that Provorov is still on the power play then? That to me, um, that to me shows that they still don't get it. The coaching well, they staff don't have still a doesn't get it. Who, are you, who, who else are you going to put on the power play? Do you want to put Sandheim consistently on the power play? 
I mean, the f- I- he has been better now. Now, don't get me wrong. Travis Sanheim has kind of been the defensive version of Lindblom, where ever since Mike Yo has come in, he's actually played the game that you want him to play all along and be more aggressive offensively because that's what he did the entire time coming up through juniors and the AHL level. And then he kind of lost that under AV at the end there where he was playing on his heels, where now he's playing on his toes again. So I think if that can happen, I would switch him with Proby, to be honest. And then the only good thing Keith Yandel does at this point is the second power play unit. Like, okay, like, but that's like, basically like, what he was brought in to do. So oh, why yeah, isn't he doing that, it? That's true, but 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 like you and Lance like kind of hinted, but but like he hasn't ever been like this bad at five on five. Like like right, this no, year's making putrid turnovers that are leading to just goals that are like. True. really bad in the neutral zone where before it usually was like he'll make mistakes like you the, the scout thing was on him he'll make mistakes in the defensive zone that lead to bit where he's making mistakes all over more this year that are leading to bad results which is not something you typically have seen from Keith Yandel. it's like he it's like he turned into the brawn of the year before this he's this year's brawn right yeah, well, this year Justin Braun's been run best defenseman, probably. Honestly, to be quite honest, so. and, and and the fact that we're saying that just makes me have it. It brings it right up to here. <laughs> well, well, I would say best defenseman has been the guy that I just mentioned ever since he took over. Yeah, um, I would say Sanheim has looked like our best defenseman because he's played like the way that I thought he should be playing to begin mm-hmm. with. Uh, but but um, when it comes to the uh, Caps, I mean, it's going to be interesting because with the people they have out, they don't have much offense that is not named Alexander Ovechkin because Lars Elwer only has 14 points. <laughs> Sprong has been very good of late, so you have to watch Daniel Sprong. <laughs> uh, she's uh, pesky against the Flyers all the time from his mm-hmm. Penguins days and even mm-hmm. that day. But, like, uh, I think the big guy, though, that doesn't have a lot of offense yet but is young that I think the Flyers have to watch out for because he's a big boy at 6'5". They don't have guys to match him as much other than if your name's Zach McEwen um, or Ristolainen. Uh, is Alexi Protus, who plays now second-line C because of the people that are out. Uh, so I think he's a guy you have to watch. They have a little bit more jam in their lineup, as their current head coach would like to say, um, which is uh, Scarbosa, who's usually in the AHL. Yeah. He's kind of one smaller guys, but that pisses you off. Uh, so... Uh, Snively also can get under your skin from watching him with the Hershey Bears. Uh, he's he's a guy that never got his shot because of his size at 5'9". But we saw, I'm not saying he's going to be this guy, but we saw a guy that got drafted in late rounds um, that never got a shot until eventually uh, with the Coyotes was Connor Garland, of course, who he was undrafted, Snively at 5'9". And I think Garland's actually 5'8". Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, we'll see what he's able to do. But I think if you can stop, if you can limit AV and or not AV, if you can limit OV and um and uh, Carlson from the back end, you have a chance against this team because their goaltending's been good this year with Sam Sonoff and uh, Vanacek. But at times those guys have let in the young goaltender goals, where they're still obviously like coming into their prime and. Vanacek now 25, Sansono 24 in the beginning of their prime ages. So, like, I think if you can play more so like we played the Golden Knights and obviously like you played New Jersey, if you played them like you played the Devils and just kind of put your foot down each period. But I don't see that necessarily happen. If you play them more like you played the Golden Knights, uh, you have a chance against this team because their scoring is really limited with the players they have out. Well, I uh- I'm with you on that, but they are, as a team, they're fifth in goals for and sixth in goals against. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree with that, but a lot of that's because with Evgeny Kuznetsov. Agreed. Uh, agreed. Agreed. 100%. Uh, I agree. But they're still tied with Carolina as tops in the Metro with 43 points. Okay, and Washington has found a way to get points in games. Okay, so 
this is one of those games where it's probably either going to go to overtime and it's going to probably go to a shootout. Either that or Washington's just going to step all over um, the Flyers. I, I agree that, look, Philadelphia well, always has a chance. But, I'm also all right with that because at this point, like yeah. the Ottawa game, like if, like the the Montreal game's a game you had to take advantage of. Ottawa is one of the more push the pace, actually good offensive teams. Their problem is they're just not a full put together team yet. They're still in the last like year and a half, two years before yeah, they see. really probably take that jump. But they have I a agree. lot of roots. And you got the Norris's, Bathurst's, the Stutzers. Like they're not like Montreal yeah. who have bunch of their talented guys out and have half of the Laval Rockets playing uh, for, for their franchise. So like the, that, that's a different degree there. I was, I wasn't too mad going to overtime with them. Cause I had seen just how good they've actually been and just had like, we beat them tough losses. Like they've had a lot of those close losses this year where Montreal is a team that you had, that there's no excuse. Well, like that's the game yeah. that, there's, that, there's, <laughs> that there's no excuse there. Um, exactly. Where where New Jersey, I just look at as a bigger win because they're the Florida Marlins of the Flyers, where like the, they just don't play the Devils well all the time for some reason. Where then they're able to spank them in that game. But yeah, uh, I think if you can just kind of limit uh, the two studs in Ovi and uh, Carlson, they have a chance in this game. But I, I would put this game at a sixty percentile to the Capitals. Um, but I, I would say it's sixty forty with the way that the Capitals have that many people out. Hmm. If Sam Sonoff is in net, okay, then I'm going to go. I feel like they're both 80 20. If Sam Sonoff is in net, I'm going to go 80 uh, 20 Capitals. If Sam Sonoff is not in net, I'm going to go 70 30 capitals. Okay. I, I mean, don't... I feel like, I feel like they're fairly even goaltenders, Vanacek and Sam Sonoff. They both played 16. It seems like the caps feel they're fairly even goaltenders with how much they played, but they've literally played them both even uh, yeah. th- th- this far. Um, I, I, and which there's no problem with that. Cause then you just pick out who takes the uh, reins at a certain point. Once you go on your run uh, to, to the playoffs, but, uh, yeah, you you can go 73. I think I'll stick with 60, 40 just because yeah. the people, if they had backs from Oshie, don't get me wrong. If they had all those yeah, people, no, I, would th- I would think we were going to get killed. But I think this is the time you could take advantage of the Maybe. Capitals because of the people they have out of the lineup. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all on that. Not disagreeing with you at all. But um, just I just think the Flyers are going to lose more games than they're going to win. And when when. We saw when they went into the meat of their schedule, which was basically the whole first part of the schedule where they played almost all the top teams. I mean, they had the hardest schedule in the league, and they just crumbled. They're, they they are just – I mean, it cost them a coach, an assistant coach. You know what I mean? So yeah. This is true, but it's all about making it up when you have an easier schedule, which we do other than this Agreed. Game. Agreed, but you know, but the Flyers going forward had had some easier games, had an easier schedule. If you can get points there, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you'll be in a better spot. But 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 it all depends. I mean, this team actually. I mean, if for most of the times in my lifetime, the Flyers have been a second half team. Normally, like Zach and I have talked about that on PlayStation a couple times. We on, but we haven't been a team that normally. I'm like, oh my god, the first half of the season has been absolutely disgusting. Where yeah, everything, no, yeah, nine, yeah. Nine out of ten, once January hits at a certain point, is when the Flyers are like, oh, you know what, guys, we figured out that we're a great team, and then it's like, you know what, guys, we know how to actually. Get, where like that, that's happened so many times in the past. Whether it's when Lavi's coached. Um, whether it's when uh, even Hack coached that one season, we ended up making it with him the second time. Uh, yeah. Like, there's been just runs you went on where, like I said before, we've lost 10 games in a row two times before and made the postseason. We won 10 games in a row one time and didn't. So this team has a very odd history of um, how they're able to. Yeah, that that would be putting it mildly. <laughs> accomplish things. Um, but, 
when it comes to these two teams, similarly to how we said with Washington, but the Vegas Golden Knights and uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning are both performing at a very high clip um, with uh, people out on the COVID protocol as well. Mark Stone is day-to-day, so maybe he'll be able to go. Yeah. Uh, Martina is out. Patrick was skating, but I don't think he's supposed to be back yet. Yeah. Uh, but I would have to say on home ice, uh, I would be leaning, especially with the Golden Knights also playing fantastic this season, obviously. Uh, that factors in. But I would be going with the Golden Knights on this one. Mm, of of the games that are out there, this was the uh, one of the ones that I felt was probably one of the games to watch. Uh, for this coming week, this was one of those games that we talked about on the Off the Ball Hockey Show. It was one of the games to to check out because this is what I felt what the Stanley Cup was supposed to be, or what everybody thought it was going to be last year, but it just wasn't, right? Okay, and so that's why I think this matchup is going to be a re- this is going to be a must watch game. This is probably going to be a very physical game, and and. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, man, but I'm going to be staying up to watch this game, okay? I'm on the East Coast, and I'll be staying up to watch all of this game for sure. I've been watching a lot of West Coast games, like on the on the condensed game side, you know what I mean? Because um, mm-hmm. I have the ESPN app and all that other stuff, and I subscribe to all that plus and all that. So I get all these games, and I've been watching a lot like a lot of these West games, you know what I mean? So... I felt that this was one of the games to watch this for this week because it was the Stanley Cup that could have been, should have been, what everybody thought was going to be, and it just wasn't. And so I still think Tampa Bay is going to going to prevail in this game. Um, I just, man, I, I just can't get past Vasilevsky. I just, man, you just, he just. Is too good. He's just too good, just too good. And he's putting up the same kind of numbers he was putting up last year. And so I, I just can't see anybody stopping that Vasilevsky train again this year. Well, I yeah, I do think the team they're playing is the best team that has the chance to dethrone uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, because of how they play physically and, and how they can match uh, – uh, Tampa Bay, no matter what, because Tampa Bay can either play that physical game or they can play that run and gun and that's game. What the or... do as exactly. Well. So yeah, I exactly. Feel like, like this is uh, the year that if the Knights keep trending in the right direction, I'm not ready to predict it yet. But eventually, on one of these shows, I probably will say that they will be my Stanley Cup favorite. Um, Who the Knights? So yeah, they're they're, they're trending okay. towards that direction. Okay, I mean, I, they... especially because I'm waiting for Leonard to be the Leonard I know he can be. Yeah, we and haven't it, seen that yet. And then as soon as that happens, I'm really going to be bought in on the Golden Knights. So yeah, I'm with uh, you. And also, you got Jack freaking Eichel that's coming back. So I mean, the, the, that that is like Kucherov coming back for the Tampa Bay. Like you have one of the better. Okay. Well, so there you go. So you got Jack Eichel potentially coming back for the Vegas golden Knights and you have Kucherov potentially coming back for the Tampa Bay lightning. Yeah. Hey, uh, maybe this is going to be the Stanley cup for this year. Yeah. And then you got point coming back prior to both. prior to that. Right. You know, so, Hey, and, and, and some of the golden Knights have been coming back from being injured as well. You know what I mean? So, hey, you know. but I'm still looking for Tampa Bay on this one. I, I do agree. I do agree with you, though, that the Vegas has definitely improved even from last year, I think. Um, but I still think Tampa Bay is still the team to beat. They are still the king of the of the of the hill. And until you knock them off, um, I, I got to go with Tampa Bay. Uh, well, last and not least, we have a couple games on Thursday uh, evening, as Steele said. Uh, one of them is our Philadelphia Flyers, the Battle of Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh um, against the Pittsburgh Penguins, where they seem to actually play Pittsburgh better sometimes in than, Pittsburgh. than in the Wells Fargo Center. Yeah, so uh, since I just got done saying this team doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense and they're playing Pittsburgh on the road, that they tend to play them a lot better, I'll go with us. Still without Malkin, um, I believe they're still going to have a couple players on the protocol list as well. Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, they should still yeah. have a couple people on the yeah. protocol list. Although, here's the thing, though. Uh, 
uh, Casperitis, or not Casperitis, gosh, Casperitis. Um, what's his name? I can't think of him. Casper, Capitan. Capitan. Casper, Capitan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain has been playing really well. Jeff Carter has been playing really, really well. Um, are, are they going to have uh, Gensel is going to be back? Is Gensel going to be back? If he's uh, back, it's still no. I don't know about it yet. It still says he's injured with the upper body, according to this report. But maybe. And then okay. Boyle's day to day, according to this. Uh, okay. Brian Rust it still says is uh, out with the lower body injury. Okay. So they're missing a couple of guys, just like the Flyers are still going to be missing. Yeah, okay. probably Morgan for unless if Frost can come off of protocols, and then right. you have Wilman on COVID protocol. Ellis right. is of course still injured. Hayes joined the COVID protocol today. So yeah, yeah. I still have to lean the other side of the state. I still have to go with the Pittsburgh side. Um, I I still just think, yeah, Flyers do play them better historically inside. Um, uh, Pittsburgh, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I mean, you know, this is, I mean, it could be, but, and the last game was a close game. Um, back in November, the Penguins did squeak out a win three to two, you know what I mean? But I, I just think Penguins have been playing a lot better. Um, at this part in the season than what the Flyers are playing. And I, I just feel it's going to be a Penguins. I think Pittsburgh's been playing a much better season overall. I agree with that. I do think the Flyers, though, um, you have some of the same guys that have had success in that stadium. I think when you have comfortability, I heard baseball players talk about it, uh, yeah. not as much hockey, but like when you know you're good in that stadium, you are you yeah. tend to play looser sometimes. Yeah, really. yeah. And you it, know, like they kinda, know like, the kind of gets your bones going a bit and then like I'm with you. So I feel like that, that that's why I'm gonna give us a little bit of a slight lean in that one. Uh Dallas of all the okay, I, of the two games of the two games, Pittsburgh and Washington, I would say they'd have a better chance against Pittsburgh than they did do against uh, Washington. Yeah, I would the, the reason I'm giving them the chance against Washington is because the people out, not because right. of, of right, the, right, of, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, I think this is the game I'll give. Uh, actually, I don't know because the Blackhawks they lost two in a row, but they're four, four, and two. They've been all right of late. Uh, I think I would still have to go with the Stars at Blackhawks, lean that one with Jake yeah. Oscar. Yeah. Um, in that who obviously everybody knows it's no secret um how much I love that dude uh so uh, I'll go I'll go with the Dallas Stars. Well, he's he basically was the one that got uh Hudobin to go to get out on waivers. So yeah, the the I fact mean, yeah the, the fact that he's played so well. So I, I have to go Dallas on that one as well over Chicago, even though it's play even though it's in Chicago. Yeah, and then the next game that would be the nine o'clock game that night would be the expected starters would be Scott Wedgwood, who's really started finding his way uh, with the Arizona Coyotes in that. And then Andre Vasilevsky, of course, had a few ticks of success with the New Jersey Devils, Wedgwood, but more runs where this season, record wise, he's on the Arizona Coyotes. So throw that out the window. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Both uh-huh. against them, he has a two nine four and a 90.269 save percentage. So that's pretty darn good for being the net minder for the Arizona Coyotes. Um, and, and you know what? I, I think we're probably going to see an Elliott in the in net for this one. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. And then also Vidge Melka, his goals against is going up a bit, but again, he's on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, I still think, like J.J. pointed out when we had a broadcast with him, he's been good this year. It's his first year from the Czech Republic. You're going to see bumps in the road um, at times. But I, I think they got good goaltending, which is a good foundation to obviously start with. You also got Prosvitov and others down there in the minors. So uh, th- they got a good foundation there. But for this year, yeah, they're not a they're not a competitive uh, team against the uh, Tampa Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, I just wanted to shoot them a bone with some success rate they do have. Uh, some they do have, I, yeah, yeah. Give give Coyotes fans something to then say that they're going to lose against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Right there, you go. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, and Clayton Keller's doing well again. So if you want to trade him, you have that. If you want to keep him, yeah. which you think I would do, there you I go. Think, your captain, but that's just me. Uh, okay. If Jake Chitron is well, Chitron 
to be your captain. He can always be an A for you, though. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm because gonna... if you want to have, you want to keep your leaders around, but that's just me. Exactly. Exactly. You want to trade him. I think many teams would like to get their hands on Clayton Keller. But yeah, I would agree with that 100%. Um, so uh, the uh, Vegas Golden Knights uh, at home against the Kings, the 10 o'clock game. Um, the Kings have been an interesting team this year. They kind of been destroyed because of their defense, um, injuries, but they still been able to figure it out, um, to go five, three and two in the last 10 and also be 14, 11 and five. So they've been an impressive team for me in that aspect because they haven't had, they obviously don't have the deepest ready NHL depth on defense, but, and then they got hit with injuries, had to put different guys in and they still kind of. Um, figured it out and scratched and clawed um, to a couple wins. Um, particularly, they beat the Capitals last game, which is obviously a really good win. They beat the Panthers four to one, and they beat the Wild two to one. So, yeah, uh, this team has some really good wins of late. Uh, it, it's in Vegas, go one of the obviously the loudest stadiums in hockey. Uh, so I would have to go with the Vegas Golden Knights in this game. I do think it'll be a good game, though. The Kings have been in more competitive games than blowouts this year, but I definitely think Vegas will be able to get over the hump and beat them. Uh, Quick has been part of the main reason why they've been playing really well there. Um, and I also think, too, that um, um, L.A. is not quite the California team that's impressed this year. Um, I-, I felt that L.A., the Kings... We're going to be kind of on that outside looking in kind of thing, especially with the division that they're in. But I also feel that there's some other California teams that are clawing and scraping um, as well. Although uh, lately, I would say LA has been better than because San Jose's dip has right. actually been better of late. We're all right. The most impressive California teams, Anaheim. But. Right. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm leading to. OK, uh, but K- L.A. Kings have been playing better this year. I agree, but they're just not quite there yet. So I got to go Vegas on this all day. Yeah, yeah, I would have to say Vegas. Um, but I would say if I had to say now with the way the Sharks have dipped, the Kings would be my second team. If I had to rank the California, then the Sharks would be behind now. And then you would have obviously after Anaheim. You would put yeah. Anaheim and then you would put the Kings and then the Sharks. Anaheim, Kings and then San Jose. Yeah, because San Jose yeah. dipped where the Kings have been playing better through yeah, their I injuries agree. the last week. Now, that can change by – not next week because there's not a, there's no games to do that, but that can change by a couple of weeks when we do the show again. Um, but for now, I would say that's where it's at. Yep, where the Ducks are because of Trevor Zegers, which is the funniest thing. Stothers was on, who again – who, by the way, I think he won the Calder Cup with the Milwaukee Admirals, was a really good assistant here well, one time. If we're looking at a guy that's really good at holding his players accountable, all of his players talked about that before, but in a constructive and not a bad way that would get him in trouble or anything with, like, uh, all of his players talk about how they love how they made him the best they can be in the best condition they can be. He's already had experience with the organization. Just the thought of outside of the box, maybe he would be a coach option that the Flyers would think about because he can restore a locker room pretty he has a reputation in the AHL to be able to bring any locker room together and get the most out of anybody that that he has and uh and all of his guys a lot of his former players attest to that plus he's coaching uh, the he's right now coaching the defense of the Anaheim Ducks who are one of the better defenses early on I'm with you but here's uh, what I think here's what I think the Philadelphia is going to do I think they're going to they're going to hire you because they're going to. Well, then I would still try to get him as a, because he's one of the best, in my opinion, defensive assistants. Well, I don't think that it'll be hard to get him. from the He's the, he's a safe <laughs> bet because they can, yeah. they can basically say that it was the injuries and we thought he did a great job with, with the injuries and everything that happened with the flyers this year. And so we're going to offer him a head coaching position where, and I think there are some much better coaches out there that could help the flyers get over the hump. That can help the flyers get to a point where they're going to be. But I think that the flyers basically need to do the reset button and start from the top down and start over. 
Yeah, that's I mean, I don't work. think Yo. I mean, Yo's like two forty six, one eighty one. Like he's not terrible. Like he started coaching at a younger age. And some. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm with you. His, yep. Like, I understand to show it where if he can get us back into a race, and even if we just miss with how terrible the first half has been, uh, mm. I, I do think I, I do think he would get hired if he kind of just does solid, but but we still don't like they, he doesn't show exactly what they want to see. Like Gordon did solid, but obviously didn't show exactly. I don't think he will get hired. I think they'll go with somebody uh, else that's out there and and, and available. Um, at that time, if they don't do that, if there's another struggle point in this season, because say he wants to take a couple months on, but say there's another struggle point in February and Paul Maurice is ready to coach and you call up Paul Maurice and Paul Maurice goes, oh, yeah, sure. I'll take the Philly job and try to bring this team back uh, to the promised land. Uh, or call um, Julian. Then you can do that. Yeah, Julian, we mentioned him before. Um, so like you have different names out there. Um, that can kind of restore a locker room well. I do think Yo, though, he has the reputation of being that kind of yeah, strict, but not like like similar to like in a much lesser toned down degree of um, how like Baruby kind of can have that strict tone, but like Yo has had like the kind of the general reputation, but also is more like Greg Baruby doesn't necessarily always go out of his way to compliment. Somebody on his, which is not a bad thing because he holds people accountable really well and he's a great coach. But Yo will kind of like he complimented Max Wilman and his play early on in his career. But Ruby might be a coach that waits a little bit longer to compliment someone's play until they're deeper into their career. But there, there's no problem with either way of it. But it's just a different strategy. I feel like this is the the, the thing with the Flyers though is it's hard to judge them because. Not that we've had a bunch of people out, but you talk about the top-down structure, but they didn't have a plan in place after they got rid of A.V. and his coaching staff that they've been coaching shorthanded. So we haven't only been playing shorthanded. All right. right. We've been coaching shorthanded where you've had two guys that have had to do most of the uh, play. I agree. And, and so there. that's why I, I think this whole thing is basically a big, giant mess. Um, and And – Quite frankly, it's 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 just sad if you ask me. It's really sad that this team is. is At this point, I'm just paying attention to how much I love Max Woolman's play. The fact that Cordero I mean, yeah, I'm was, trying to watch positivity in the players play. Uh, you got but, Cordero, that's pissed. It's going to get to second all time yeah. points. Yeah. So, um, so, but there you go, man. Um, I I think we pretty much uh, covered the covered that there. What do you think? No, yeah, we definitely covered the NHL, where for the NBA, there's unfortunately been some uh, postponed games as well, where my Sixers yeah. joined that. There was positive COVID test that resulted in games yesterday being postponed. But just like the NHL, um, it was the Sixers, Pels, Cavaliers, Hawks, and then it was Denver and Brooklyn. Um, but just like the NHL, they say they're going to keep trucking along um, there. Where the NBA, because they only have Toronto to deal with, would have a little bit of an easier job to try to implement NFL-like protocols because they would only have to convince one Canadian area that that is okay. Right. Where with the problem with the NHL that Elliot Freeman saying is if they want to do, like, you don't test asymptomatic people or anything like that anymore, like the NFLs, they're going to have trouble with certain providences in Canada. Right. Where if you could get that cleared with one, which would only be Toronto, then yeah. you would be fine with the yeah, NBA. Yeah, so with you. so a little, yeah. bit, well, not a little, bit, it makes it significantly easier. But but I don't know how Toronto feels about that. So it might not be as easy. But <laughs> um, the 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 um, I think with the NBA, I think it's the right decision, obviously, to keep trucking along. But when we get into other teams, uh, currently, uh, similarly to how the Flyers are hard to judge, but in a different way. My Philadelphia 76ers are hard to judge, too, because they've had so many people in the COVID protocol, so many people in and out of the lineup. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, it, it's really hard to peg where they're at. They're at 15 and 15 right now, still at eighth. Andrew and I did a video on them. I think there's still time for this team to recover. There's obviously things they need to add, and we talked about that in, in the video if you want to check that out. But, like, mm -hmm. they also have underperformers. Like, Danny Green needs to be more consistent. Um, 
Thibault's great defensively, but you would like to see him make a few threes, so he's yes. not a liability on that end of the court. Uh, you have Milton, who's a good scorer. I think he does his job fine because uh, he, he's not a three-point shooter. He's just more of an overall playmaking scorer. Uh, he does that fine. Maxie does his job fine. Uh, Embiid has been fine, but he hasn't been able to do it all. You kind of need to find that secondary guy where uh, the one podcast that they had on NBC Sports for the Sixers was Tobias Harris's struggles are like, I forget what Zachy title, but like, Tobias Harris's struggles are a big problem. Well, I wouldn't title it that extreme because he still has scored like teens to 20s in game. But right. you can tell he's battling and he's not himself where yeah. if you can get that secondary scorer back, that would be big where like Andrew said, the big thing with Harris, why he's going to get bombarded is he was never worth a supermax contract. Right. It's just, you lost Jimmy Butler. So you kind of went crap. We yeah. have to, there's no way. We can. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you had to keep him. And that's what happened there. Cause we even said it on the, on the show we did. You shouldn't be saying your supermax guy isn't the guy you want taking shots at the end of the game. We didn't say it this blunt, but like hinted at it. If you want a guy taking your shots at the end of the game, that's Seth Curry. And Seth Curry has a pretty nice contract himself. But uh, like, like that should be as a shooting guard, as a guard or like a three or a four. They, you should be able to, as a guy that stretches the floor a little bit as Tobias, be somebody that you would rely on that a little bit more. But that's never really been the part of his game. We're not having that secondary like not having another closer that's not a center, because obviously there's nothing against a B, but I said it on the Sixers show, having your guy that's your ultimate goat, that's a great, that can be your closer as a center, does limit you in today's game. Exactly. So uh, you, having it only really be Curry, uh, I, I think you need to, that's the biggest addition for me, you need to add more shooting. And obviously I think that's something that's going to come from, whether it's a three-team trade, whether it's a two-team trade, whatever the heck it is, getting Ben Simmons moved on elsewhere since it's past the date that you can trade people um, like him. So I, I think uh, th th that's going to be something that they got to really focus on in order to uh, get this team where they want them to be because doing that will add the depth to your team. Even if it's just a guy like Buddy Yield and you add a couple of like, um, Halbert and other guys that that have skill. Uh, they're, they're, nobody necessarily, if Ben hits his full potential, is going to equal what Ben could equal. But he's not doing it here, and he doesn't want to play here. So you got to get guys that will be <laughs> on the court and be yeah, on exactly, the court. exactly. So. All right, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I think we got a lot covered. We covered uh, a lot of the big majors. We covered a lot of great information. We put a lot of information out there for you. Um, we got um, a lot of information that's going on about the World Juniors, the NHL, the NBA, uh, and a lot of stuff that's going on in the football. And, man, I'll tell you what. Another great show, we man. What do you think? We didn't on the World Juniors, though. So maybe if we have time before Christmas, we can hop on for a second show of the week to try to do that before the – 26th but we'll, we'll have to see we'll um, have to see yeah we'll have to see because uh, we have, have time before that videos. starts we have time before that starts I have done videos though on my sports fanatic news page for people that want to show them at, check them out on Germany, Sweden I almost said Switzerland which I haven't done yet Sweden and um, Finland and also America's team US this far which I'm going to do Canada tonight and Russia at some point once I figure out how to pronounce three other people's names that I've been having trouble with uh, <laughs> for, for, yeah, for, that, for that particular club. Um, for sure, but man, the for last sure. thing I wanted to put in this one is to cap off. Well, not to cap off. They'll have more additions once the season comes back of, from the lockout. But to put a stamp on an already successful offseason, the New York Mets get a manager who I think is one of the better – of uh, my lifetime in Buck Showalter, who just like we talk about with guys that just know how to control a locker room, but still let guys be them, but kind of be a general at the same time. That's exactly what Buck Showalter is. Where nice. even Manny Machado, who some people thought was kind of not with Showalter all the time, kind of like people say Goudreau wasn't always with Sutter, but look what he's yeah. doing now. Machado yeah. complimented him all but nice things to say about Showalter nice. and said he's exactly what the Mets need. And I think, unfortunately for Phillies fans like me, I think he is exactly what, the, as long as people stay healthy on that team, somebody that has the experience like him is not going to overuse the analytics, but still like he's talked about when he's been on MLB network, like I'll use that stuff, but I'm not going to shove it down someone's throat. Right. Like, 
<laughs> like I, I think um, he's a perfect pick for there. He's a guy personally I wanted for here. Uh, now we have right. Joe Girardi, obviously, but uh, he's now with the New York Mets. Uh, I, I think that's a perfect signing. He was a, one of my favorite managers when he was with the Baltimore Orioles. That's where I paid attention to him the most. But, um, yeah, he, he definitely was a fun guy. I remember the one game I was there, he ended up coming out to argue, and uh, you could tell how much the fans loved him when he was in Baltimore. Plus, he got them a couple <laughs> Baltimore yeah, right. In this as playoffs as much as in the in the um in the nineteen hundreds there. So uh, yeah, I uh, that that just that alone is going to get you loved. Uh, they haven't seen the playoffs as much as they had Earl Weaver, who has a song based around him called "The Earl of Baltimore." So, <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um, how about if you tell the folks where we can get a hold of you, where we can reach you, and where we can get all your great articles and all your upcoming stuff? Yeah, you can uh, catch some of my stuff um, on uh, Steel Flyers once we get the pages um, loaded back up and stuff. We got all the good uh, stuff and bells and whistles there. Also on Flyers Nitty Gritty, I just put out an article on Hayden Hodgson, um, who seems like kind of has the potential to be the new ECHL wonder boy lappy handed at him himself. So. Uh, kind of saying he could be the next Max Wilman. Um, so that's something I put out. And then I have more articles on there. And then my Sports Fanatic News YouTube page uh, that I put out stuff, excuse me, for the World Juniors, Sixers, that Andrew and I just did a video on, did a video with Hector, a super fan of the Royals. Uh, nice. For the Royals, just put out one with Off the Wall Hockey on the Boston Bruins and their quarterly and holiday report. So Nice. Awesome sauce, man. Well, thank you very much for hopping on. Another great edition of the JB and Steel Show, Volume 5 already. Uh, you can follow me at SteelFlyers52 on Twitter, and you can check me out on the, lo- on the web at www.steelflyers.com. Thanks, Joe, very much for another great show, man. We will catch you all on the next JB and Steel Show. Happy holidays. <laughs>